do not adjust your screen. I am really releasing a video today. Hello folks, Jason Christman, JC's Bees. You know here recently, um, I haven't been doing the greatest job posting weekly videos here on the Bee Channel, and I apologize for that. I know there's a lot of people that look forward to them on Sunday mornings, and when they're not there, well, you've got to find something else to kill a few minutes, and that's never any fun. If you're like me, you like your your rituals in the morning, and when those get broke, it kind of screws up your day. So I understand, and I'm, uh, and I want to apologize. I'm sorry. Um, hope to get back in the weekly loop here real soon. You know, spring's in the air, and that's what I want to talk about today. You know, a lot of us are seeing our bees out flying, and they're gathering pollen and bringing it back to the colonies, and and uh, that's very intriguing and encouraging to us. But at the same time. Um, it is March. It's still early March. And there's an old saying that when March comes in like a lamb, it's going to go out like a lion. And it's definitely came in like a lamb here in central Ohio. We've had 70 degree days. Um, we're 45 degrees right now. We got rain coming and it's going to cool back down a little bit, but it's pretty mild. You know, the grass, it's hard to tell here, but up at our least farm, um, it's turning green super, super fast. It seems like it's way earlier than it should be. And I think a lot of people see all these different signs and they think, you know, um, it's time for me to go start working my bees. It doesn't help any that you get on Facebook and people in other states are breaking their colonies apart, making inspections, and you're like, hey, I think I can do that now. Well, the person you're watching might be down south where it's a lot warmer, and maybe that's not registering with you, or you didn't really give it any thought. But it's real easy to jump the gun this time of year. Um, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus here, but I had a local beekeeper uh, maybe six miles away reach out to me the other day. And uh, he's fairly new, him and his wife at beekeeping. I think they're on their, their third year this year. And uh, he's one of these people that seen the bees flying, pollen coming in, and he thought, well, I'm going to break the boxes down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stick my, my queen excluder between the two boxes and uh, I'm gonna get set. And then after he put the queen excluder in, he thought, you know, maybe I better reach out to Jason and make sure that was a good idea. And I told him, uh, I think I'd remove those. Uh, it's a little bit too soon. When March comes in like a lamb, it's gonna go out like a lion. And if you look at the, the forecast, the extended forecast for the rest of the month, there's some 20s in the morning. And during that time, the bees could cluster a little bit. Maybe not super tight because it's not a prolonged cold period, but they will cluster up and maybe pull in a little bit. Now, if they've got brood, they're not gonna wanna leave that brood. So, you know, there's a lot to weigh here. I understand the excitement. You're ready to get started. Um, I see green grass and I'm ready to start grazing, but at the same time, if I start grazing now, next week we'll be out of grass and I'll be feeding hay again. So, you kinda gotta slow things down uh, maybe tie yourself down so you're not jumping the gun and uh, just hold off for a little bit. You, you, you think about it with the grass. If I let the grass get, you know, it's probably only a couple inches tall now and it's green, but if I let it get to about this high and we start grazing, then I'll be ahead of the game because see, we've got spring flush coming. And with the spring flush, the grass and the forage grows like crazy. And if I don't start grazing at that time, the grass is gonna greatly pull ahead of me. It's kind of the same scenario with the bees. If we get into them too soon and set up for disaster by putting a queen excluder in the middle of the box when it's a little bit too soon to be doing that, um, what happens if it gets cold for, let's say it gets in the 20 for, 20s for four days straight? Then bees are gonna cluster super tight and that queen excluder could keep the queen from getting to the cluster and she could freeze to death and die. So that's nothing any of us want. I know that. Um, so don't jump the gun. Be patient, folks. Spring's in the air, but spring is not here yet. Um, in other news, got this awesome shirt. I think I'm one of the first ones to have it from Hive Alive. Uh, I'll pull up a snapshot here and show you what the back of it looks like. Uh, I wanna thank Hive Alive for uh, thinking of me first um, before anybody else got a chance to uh, share it with everybody. So now on their website and you can order these t-shirts right from them. So if it's something you're interested in, you can use my affiliate link and save yourself a few bucks. Um, another great product they have that 
I'm still feeding right now is the Hive Alive Fondant patties. I kind of swear by them things anymore. Um, and other news, my book. So I had a meeting this week with my book people. And what we're doing now is we're trying to figure out the font and the page format for each page. And then we're going to go back and then they're going to take the whole book and they're going to put it in that format and lay it all out. And then we'll head to publishing, I believe. So it's pretty exciting. But I learned something the other day about making a book that I never really gave any thought to. Um, see, there's some requirements for different specs on a book depending on where you're going to sell it. And one of the places we plan to list my book is Amazon. So Amazon's specifications um, for one of the uh, topics of the book is the, the gutter, the book gutter. Have you ever heard of the book gutter? Do you even know where that is? Because I didn't until a couple of days ago. I'm going to tell you where that is. If you take a book and you open it up, you've got your spline here in the middle. The gutter is from this center spline over to the last word. So it's basically the space from the edge of the last word in the sentence to the center spline. And why that's important is if you, as your book gets thicker and gets more pages in it, it becomes harder to open it and see all those words because the end of them might be cut off and the spline. And that spacing from the center over to that last word is called your book gutter. Never really gave that any thought, but it is a pretty important specification that we follow. Um, so I thought that was interesting and I wanted to share that with y'all, but we are getting closer. I know there's a lot of people super, super anxious, um, including my mom. She's <laughs> asking me weekly, I think, when's your book coming out? What do you know? I, I don't have any, I don't have all of them details yet, mom. So anyway, we are getting closer. Um, I'm not sure that I'm allowed, but I'm going to pull up a quick sample here and kind of show you what the format's looking like. And uh, I'd love for you to leave your feedback down in the comments section. What do you think? And yes, this is an actual um, display of a page of my book, or two pages, I guess, with one of my illustrations from my illustrator. So pretty excited to share that. So anyway, I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, let's see, we talked about Don't Jump the Gun, the book gutter, showed my Hive Alive t-shirt, which I'm super proud of. Um, another thing, a couple other things I'd like to mention that I'm going to talk about here in future videos. Um, I got these here, oh, it's probably been a month or so ago. I've just been busy, it's been cold, the weather's been crappy. But what we got here is Easy Ox oxalic acid tablets. Check these out. This makes measuring oxalic acid super duper easy. Look at that. So each bag, each packet has 50 tablets and each tablet is one gram. So no more measuring, folks. You simply just drop the tablet in your vaporizer and wham, bam, treat your bees. So I'll be doing a demonstration on this and we'll talk a little bit about it here real soon. But I wanted to share, if this is something you're interested in, make sure you stay tuned. If you're not a subscriber, this is a great time to subscribe so you can see this video when it comes out. Easy Ox Auxilic Acid Tablets. Okay, and another product I'll be talking about here real soon. I'm going to do a demonstration, and I'm going to experiment with these later on this year. And what these are is called the Banks Sidebars. And he's got a, he just put up an Etsy site. Um, they are a little bit more pricey now because he has to 3D print them. But once he gets his molds made up, the price will be uh, dropping. Um, but I'll be sharing a lot more content on this here real soon. Basically what we got here is we have a deep frame up here. Um, this is a piece of shallow foundation, but you're supposed to have medium foundation down here at the bottom. Just kind of threw it together to give you an idea of what it looks like. And the idea with this is, is that you would put it into a double story box. Um, granted, one would be a medium and one would be a deep because of the frame setup, a medium and a deep. Um, they don't necessarily have to be in this order. Um, but the idea is you'll stick this into your hive and this will make it easier for the queen to get from the bottom box 
up to the top box. You see, you've got that space between the uh, top bars and the bottom bars in our boxes. Um, we've got the top bars here, bottom bars here, and there's anywhere from three quarters of an inch gap in some of these um, hive setups. And it makes it a little bit tricky for the queen to move from one box to the other. So the idea is if you stick a couple of these in the center of your box, it'll make it a lot easier for the queen to move up and down. Another thing I like about it is you don't have to unsack your box to inspect these. You can simply remove the top cover and the uh, inner cover, pull this frame out and check it all at once. Now it's gonna be pretty exciting, I think, to pull all of this out and see it all laid out and brood. Um, he's also created some devices that go in here in the center. I have yet to receive those, but once I do, um, I'll do a more thorough video on this. But the bank sidebars, I'll link them below if you wanna go ahead and reach out and check them out on SD. Um, but yeah, I'm very, very excited about these. So we got that and the acid tablets to look forward to. Not only that, we're looking forward to spring, right? And it's coming very quick, very, very quick. I think things are way ahead of where they normally are this time of year. Um, could be wrong. Maybe it's just uh, I'm getting older and I'm really hoping. I don't know. Anyway, folks, um, hope you enjoyed today's video. You got any questions or comments on anything I shared, you can leave that down below. Um, and I'd like to encourage everybody um, to come over and check out my new community, Beekeeping Blueprint. It doesn't matter to me if you're a brand new beekeeper or if you have experience um, and been a beekeeper for many years. Matter of fact, I encourage everybody to come over and let's make a great beekeeping community where we can all share and, and help each other out. Um, as a community, as a whole, we definitely help each other more than individuals going one-to-one. -one. So I think it could be a great opportunity for everybody. So if it's something you're interested in, I'll leave a link down below. For less than a cup of coffee, you pay it one time fee and it's a lifetime membership. You never have to pay it again. So anyway, if that's something you're interested in, please check it out, folks. I'd like to encourage everybody to at least go check it out and uh, see what you think. So thanks for watching, folks. And uh, with any luck, I'll even do a video next week. Thanks for watching. JC's Bees.